everybody, welcome to another video. I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video, we're gonna talk about sum and difference formulas. So these are formulas, sometimes they're called identities, same thing, right? That we can use to solve stuff like this, where it's an angle that is not on our unit circle. It's something that we would not normally be able to evaluate. We can now evaluate something like this if we're able to break it up into two angles being added or subtracted, right? Sum or difference, that means addition or subtraction. If I can break this up into two angles that are being added or subtracted, and I know the sign of both those angles, right? Then I can evaluate this, okay? So we need formulas to do this, obviously. I have mine written down in front of me. I'm gonna set it in front of me here. So depending on, maybe some of you are given a formula sheet in your exam, then you're really lucky. All you need to know is how to use these, right? You don't need to worry about memorizing them. If you aren't and you do need to remember these, my suggestion is write you out something like this. It's just a sheet with the sum and difference formulas I wrote out. And as you're doing your homework, as you're practicing, flip this over and see if you can come up with on your own and then flip it back over to check your answer. The more you use these, the more likely it is you will remember them. And that's really the best way, in my opinion, to memorize things in math is just use them over and over and then you will remember them. There's no need to do flashcards or anything like that. But unfortunately, I don't know any kind of mnemonic device or song or trick to remember these. You just kind of remember them. But I'm in front of me just in case I forget. So Getting back on topic, we can use these sum and difference formulas to evaluate something like this, okay? So the formula I'm gonna use, and again, I'm looking for two angles that are either being added or subtracted to get 75. So there's more than one way I can go with this. I can actually do a sum or a difference depending on what angles I pick, but the two that jump out to me right now are 45 and 30. Those are both on the unit circle. They add up to 75 degrees. Pretty straightforward, right? So I can break this up into sine of 45 degrees plus 30 degrees. That's still the same as 75, right? And so here's the formula I'm gonna use. Let's see, since it's A plus B, right? That's at least how I have it written. I guess you could call it whatever you want. Alpha and beta, whatever you want. Sine of A plus B equals sine of A times cosine of B plus, I know that sine, the addition has a plus. With cosine, it's the opposite. That's how I remember it. So this is sine A cosine B plus sine B cosine A. Okay, so now I can just say, okay, well, 45 degrees is like my A, 30 degrees is like my B, and I basically just plug these in. So what is the sine of, well, I'll go ahead and write this out. Sine of 45 degrees plus 30 degrees equals, I'll write it up here. Sine of A, so sine of 45, sine of 45 degrees times cosine of B. So that's cosine of 30 degrees times cosine of 30 degrees plus, whoops, my A disappeared here. Sine of B, sine of 30 degrees times cosine of 45 degrees. Okay, I hope y'all can see all the way over here. And now I'm just gonna copy down what these values are because I know these because they're on my unit circle, right? That was why I picked these two angles. I know the sine of 45, the cosine of 45, and the sine and cosine of 30, so we're good to go. So sine of 45, that's gonna be root two over two. And again, I'm just basically continuing this down here. Root two over two is the sine of 45. So that's root two over two times, what is the cosine of 30? Cosine of 30 is root three over two. Plus, what else do I have here? Sine of 30, that's one half. Cosine of 45, that's root two over two. So what is my final solution? Now I can just simply, I have two fractions being multiplied, I can simply just multiply across. Root two times root three, that gives me root six. Two times two, that gives me four. Plus, what do I have? One times root two, that's root two. Two times two, that's four. So this is a decent final answer. Uh, I think it's nicer if you combine them under one fraction which is not hard to do. They already have a common denominator. So that is a good final answer. You can punch this in your calculator if you want an approximation, but it's usually better to leave it like this. So we have evaluated sine of 75 degrees without using a calculator, using our sum and difference formulas. All right, for this example, as we can see, we have tangent pi over 12. So our angle, instead of being in degrees, is in radians, which actually makes it a little bit trickier. And the reason why it's a little bit tricky is because we gotta come up with two angles that either add or subtract to get pi over 12, 
But the problem is these have to be angles that we know the values of, right? So think about the unit circle. We have like pi over three, pi over four, pi over six. Nothing is over 12. So we gotta think about these other angles, but having a common denominator of 12. So that's why it's a little bit tricky. So there's two main things you can do from this point in a problem, is that you can, one, just kind of use your math intuition, right? You gotta think about, okay, well I'm looking for two angles that are over 12. We know we're gonna have pi in them. And then kind of do a little bit of almost like a guess and check, like playing around with these numbers. What can I add or subtract together to get that pi over 12? And then checking and making sure these are values you know, right? And I know that the first thing I would try is probably this and subtract them, which happens to work, okay? But that's because I have quite a bit of experience with problems like this, that I can notice this and just kind of jump straight into that. Um, if you're struggling to come up with two angles this way, the second thing you could do is just convert to degrees. If you're like, you know what, I feel 10 times more comfortable with degrees than I do with radians, especially with breaking up into two angles and, and doing this whole process, I'm just gonna convert to degrees. You absolutely can, and just a reminder on how to do that is you take something like pi over 12, and again, whatever your uh, angle is in radians, you multiply by 180 over pi to get to degrees. The pi's will cancel, you'll be left with 180 over 12, which gives you 15. So you have 15 degrees, okay? Which makes sense because this four pi over 12, that simplifies to pi over three, right? So what do we really have here? We have tangent, tangent of pi over three minus, and this three pi over 12 simplifies to pi over four, which makes sense because that's like 60 minus 45. So I could have gotten that using degrees as well, okay? So I can rewrite this tangent pi over 12 as tangent of four pi over 12 minus three pi over 12, but I'm just gonna go straight into the simplified version of pi over three minus pi over four. All right, and now I can just go into my formula. I can go into my formula for tangent, which tells me I do what? Tangent of pi over three is up top. Tangent pi over three. And I know that I have minus here, so the minus is gonna be in the numerator and the plus is gonna be in the denominator. I do remember that about tangent. So tangent pi over three minus tangent pi over four. And then on the bottom, I have one plus, right? It's the opposite of whatever is in here. And that's tangent pi over three times tangent pi over four. Tangent pi over three times tangent pi over four. Now I just can evaluate all this stuff. So tangent of pi over three is what? Root three, I think it's root three. So I have this equals root three minus one Tangent of pi over four is one over one plus root three times one. So that's just one plus root three, right? So depending on your instructor, whoever it is will probably want you to rationalize the denominator, simplify as much as possible. If I was teaching a class, that's what I would want you to do. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna use what's called the conjugate. We can multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate, which just means whatever we have on bottom, we switch the sign, we do the opposite side in between, right? And we multiply top and bottom by that. And what this does is it gets rid of the radicals in the denominator, right? It get, gets rid of the radicals in the denominator. Um, so let's see if we can get this nicely simplified. I'll start with the numerator. We have root three. I'm basically foiling, right? That's what I'm doing. Multiplying these two binomials. So I have root three times one, that's root three. And then I have root three times a negative root three, which is minus, root three times root three is three, all right? So uh, let's see, I've done the first, outer, now inner, minus one. And now last, uh, let's see, they're two negatives, so it'll be a positive one and root three, so that's gonna give me the root three here, okay? So that's all up top. On the bottom, what do I have? One minus root three, plus root three, and this is exactly why we use the conjugate, because this is what happens. Minus root three, plus root three, those are gone, right? And then I'm left with what? Plus, let's see, that'll be a minus, because that's a plus and a minus. Root three and root three, that is three. Okay, sweet, so I can simplify this. So again, these middle terms, they cancel each other out, so I'm left with one minus three on the bottom. I had to be careful there, because that minus three went away. So I'm left with one minus three on the bottom, which is negative two. 
So I'll write it equals here. Negative 2 is on the bottom. What do I have here up top? Root 3 plus root 3. I'm just combining the like terms here, guys. Root 3 plus root 3, that's 2 root 3. Minus 3 minus 1, that's minus 4. Ooh, I see one more simplification I can do. I can actually get rid of the denominator altogether, right? Because what I can do is basically factor out a negative 2 up top, okay? So what I can do, if I factor out a negative 2, I can get, let's see, what am I left with? I'm left with negative root 3 plus 2. And since this is all over negative 2, that's the reason I factored out the negative 2. This cancels with this guy, right? And I'm left with, let's see, negative root 3 plus 2. I'm going to write that as 2 minus root 3. Same thing, right? This just, I kind of like it a little better. So this is our final solution. And maybe you could have stopped at one of these steps, depending on the instruction of your professor. Uh, but this is the final simplified form. If you punch this in a calculator, you can get an approximation. But yeah, we were able to find this using sum and difference, identities, formulas, whatever you want to call them. We were able to find this without using calculator. Pretty cool. So hopefully this video helped. If it did, make sure to hit thumbs up, hit subscribe for more, and keep flexing those brain muscles. I'll see you in the next video.